All right guys, welcome back to another video. This is kind of the second video in a two-part series that we're doing on the M30. If you haven't seen the first video with our hands-on impressions at the D1 store, check that out. It's in a link somewhere here. But this video is all about our real world usage of the M30. And who better to ask about it than our technical director, Nick, who took it out on a couple of jobs recently. And we're gonna talk about a few pointers that we think are relevant to anyone interested in looking to get the M30 over the M300. So without further ado, Nick, welcome. Thank you, Paul. I guess the thing that I'm most excited about is how much DJI has managed to pack into this drone. I wouldn't call it the M300 Lite, it's a powerful drone, but the M30 is definitely a beast of a, a drone, even though it is you know, less than half the size of this one here, the M300. It's dad, I guess. We don't have the M30 anymore, unfortunately we had to give it back, but the M300's here just so we can show it off in all its glory. So uh, let's start off with, I guess, just the simple things, the setup time. How'd you compare the M30 to the M300 in terms of setup time? Yeah, setup time on the M30, we had it in the air in less than 40 seconds. So straight out of the vehicle, control it on, arms unfolded and it's in the air in less than uh, 40 seconds. Yeah, and of course the M300, you need to assemble it, I guess, whenever you start a job. You need to put the legs on, you need to put the camera on, and depending on where you're going to location-wise, you might need to disassemble it. The M30, you can just fold it down, pack it up and slide it into one of the drawers. The timing to set this up, I know we haven't timed it just yet, we'll probably go out to the park and do it. We'll put a number down here of how long it takes. Oh, and depending if you need to set up the RTK as well, then that's a bit more extra time. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, you've got to pack this down as well. You can't keep it in the vehicle on the back shelf, especially if you're doing some forward driving and going to some locations where it's going to be bouncing around, it's yep. not going to be safe. So. Especially the camera. You yep. want to make sure that's nice and Definitely, safe. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So I guess speaking of the camera, the camera capabilities. Now, I know this is the H20T. The M30 doesn't really have a camera name because it's attached to the drone. It's just the M30. T, which is the version that we were looking at, there's also an M30 version. So I guess let's talk about some of the capabilities and the main one I assume we should talk about is the zoom capabilities. Yeah, definitely. So the zoom difference between the H20T and the M30, the M30 has a 16 times optical, whereas this is a 20 optical. Interesting. So that would mean that it's slightly less range. Less range on the M30. Yeah. They both have that 200 times zoom, mm. but from my experience and what I found out in the field, both at 200 zoom, yeah. they both have clear images, but the H20T did, I think, outperform the M30T. And there was one part of the operation where you were struggling to find the beacon at the other end with the M30, and you set the M300 up, and it was a lot easier. I, I did, one. exactly, yeah. So with the M30, there were some, some flashes in the image or yep. lights, and I didn't know what they were, but that was making it difficult to find that beacon. Um, I got the M300 up just straight after that flight and found the beacon straight away. So I, I wasn't getting those little flickering lights in the background, which yeah. I was getting in the, um, from the M30. And the M30T, which the T stands for thermal, that was the version that we were testing out. Were you able to test the thermal capabilities of the M30T versus the H20T? Yeah, the comparison of the two look, visually they look the same. There's no, yeah. you couldn't really notice any difference. Uh, I did find that on the M30 you can have a split side-by-side -side image, thermal and visual. And the rangefinder as well, how do you compare that from the M30 to the Surprisingly, H20? the rangefinder I think works better on the M30. I, I was actually getting ranges at 1200 meters and it was giving me that distance on the screen. That's what it's rated to, I think. It is, yeah. With my experience with the M300, I'm not sure if anyone else is going through the same problem, but most of the time past 600 meters, it's not showing up and it's just saying too far to detect. And the rangefinder, is that what it utilizes to do the active track as well? You got me there. <laughs> Well, because I'd imagine it would, wouldn't it? It's a laser rangefinder. So no, no, the, the, that that's make... a visual. The active track okay. is all down on visual. Yeah, okay, the, so that's just... The laser the... rangefinder will give you the position right. of what it's pointing at. So yeah, if okay. you are doing a search and rescue and you're pointing at a person that you've located, yeah. that information from the laser rangefinder is a GPS coordinate that is provided on the screen. That's why you're the technical director. Well, just back to the active track though, I was super impressed we were testing out the M30's capabilities of that, and I can't really compare it to the M300, but just watching it track the cars behind buildings and behind other things and predicting where it was going to go and then continuing on the tracking was super impressive. I mean, it's not something that we would use on our day-to-day -day, uh, work, but it is something I think that is impressive. It was quite impressive, the M30 test, 
I'm gonna say actually probably did a bit better as well. It could be a firmware, it could be the Pilot App 2 that's, that, that changed and it was actually locating vehicles that were going past or behind trees yeah. and keeping that track a lot quicker than what the uh, M300 was. Yeah, super impressive. Yeah. So battery life between the M30 and the M300, how did that fare in the field? So we haven't had them both side by side in the air, but uh, I was flying the M30 in a quite a windy day and I got half an hour flight time and that was down to 22% battery, so I wasn't gonna push it past that. And they are saying around the 40, 41 minutes. 41 saying, minutes, yeah. yeah, and that's compared to the M300, which I think was 40, 50, was it 52? 51, 51, 51 minutes, okay. yeah, around there. Yeah, sure, so again, you never really, these numbers that are given from DJI are usually in a very optimal environment, but I would still say that 30 minutes for any operation is pretty impressive. Yeah. So, and speaking of batteries, how did you find the hot swapping on the M30 compared to the M300? Yes, hot swapping on the M30 is super easy. Having those release clips on the back makes it so much easier, knowing that you're not gonna release the second battery by mistake. It has happened to me several times on the M300, where you've taken one battery out and the second one's slightly come yeah. out and the drone's turned off. And I guess also talking about just usually inserting the batteries into the M300, you know, there's no noticeable click or anything that can signify that it's all the way in before you sort of, that's how you get it, you lock the back. So I guess having that visual indication and also sound of the, the satisfying click in of the M30 is very reassuring. Definitely, so, I've, I've heard of cases where people are pushing the M300 batteries in too far and have caused cracks in, there, yes, in the frames. Yes, yeah, so I think from a design perspective, the, uh, DJI really up their game in that department. So I guess from there, let's just talk about overall operational practicality. So we're talking about the size, the capabilities, and the different jobs that you would do these on. So say for instance, the power lines, what one do you think you would opt for power line inspections? Power line, I would go for the M30. Yeah. Just because it's easier to set up, you don't need to change a payload for it, you're using your, your thermal, your visual. Uh, and the camera's and more cameras, than capable. It's more than capable, yeah. 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 With, with power line inspections, you've got clearances from your client that are quite strict, where you have to keep a distance from the tower. Um, and even that 10 meters away, the powerful zoom on the M30 is more than enough to, to do a power line inspection or a tower inspection. Yeah. So what about telco work? what would you lean towards between the M30 and the M300 or is it kind of a balancing act? A bit of a balance act. I think the M300 is still a bit better because of that more powerful zoom. You want that confidence that you are going to see a tower which is 40 kilometers away or more. But then, then again, if you know that your job is, your links are 10K or less, mm. taking the M30 is going to be a lot easier. Yeah, of course. Just yeah. being able to transport that. There is a backpack, I believe, that's been coming out with the M30. Um, so take it on your back instead of having to like around a big case. And I guess from a controller's perspective, or I guess the operating system, the M30 is operating off the Pilot 2 app, is that right? That's correct. But I believe all of the functionality between the enterprise group sort of remains the same. So, you know, you can customize your timestamps, you can create customized folders. So all that operational quality of life is still there in the M30 because it's using basically the same system. Yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. Before we get to final thoughts, the other thing I think is because the M30 is such a small drone, the clearance does seem a little bit smaller off. I mean, I know we're looking here, you've got the legs are no issue from the body, but this clearance here, I guess is still pretty low, but I think visually from the M30, it is still. Visually, yeah, we haven't measured, but visually looking at the M30, it does look like it does sit lower to the ground. Yeah. And not having the legs, having the drone a lot lower to the ground, it does make it a bit harder taking off from some grassy areas or some uneven terrain. Yep. So definitely using a launch pad is, is required. Yeah. All right, so final thoughts between the M30 and the M300 now that you've had a chance to test both out on real life operations. Yeah, I think DJI have done really well with the M30. Definitely there is a market for it and um, especially that usability being able to take it with you a lot easier than carrying this thing around. And what about the controller comparisons to it? It's kind of night and day, isn't it? It is, yeah. Obviously the Pilot 2 app is a little bit different, but very similar to the Pilot app. So anyone using the DJI M300 will go straight into the Pilot 2 app and be able to use it comfortably. There are a lot more controls or buttons on the RC Pro. And I think it takes away from having to push on the screen, mm -hmm. tap the screen. So you have more control with, with your thumbs, I guess, to zoom in, zoom out. Yep. But in saying that, the zoom in and zooming out is what I didn't like about the M30. Interesting. Zooming in with the H20T, if you do hold down the C3 button, you can use your pan as a zoom and it's nice and smooth. So you can adjust your smooth as you like it. Yep. Whereas with the M30, the buttons on the controller zoom out five times. 
Oh, was cool. it in five times? Oh, so it like steps out. Steps out, yeah. Even the, there is a wheel on the back, even that does go to like two times. Yeah. It's a still a stepping Interesting. zoom, yeah. not a smooth zoom. I wonder if that's a firmware update that can be done. I did go through the control settings. You mm. can customize a lot of it, but there was nothing there to customize the, the zoom. And I was really impressed with the FPV as well. I, I know it's got a low light capabilities now, but it was just so sharp and clear compared to what we're usually used to in the FPVs on these drones. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if it's the actual controller or the, um, the FPV camera, but it does look a bit wider. It could be yeah. just a bigger screen and yeah. it makes it a lot easier for the pilot to fly looking at that FPV screen for yeah. sure. Yeah, indeed. And have they announced that you can dual operate the M30? Yet? There's been talk of that. I, I don't see why they wouldn't do it. There is talk about the Flight Hub 2 where you can live stream to other devices, mobile devices. Yeah. So I don't see why there wouldn't be a, a dual control option. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this video. We really enjoyed getting our hands on the M30T and we're looking forward to getting the retail version as soon as it's available. And you'll know there'll be more videos about the M30 as soon as that happens. So subscribe for more and we'll see you guys next time.